can't tell you because that's the discussion question. Okay. All right. Good evening. There's a Monday. 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 New Monday. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? And the discussion question tonight. I don't know if we have any friends with us yet. Oh, okay. So I gotta wait. Maybe I should start reciting um, a poem. You know, really from my youth. In. We'll start flocking. Yeah. So is this to show your... Uh... Billy in one of his nice new sashes fell on the fire and was burnt to ashes. Now, although the room grows chilly, I haven't the heart to poke poor Billy. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Stephanie. You know, I learned that when I was like seven and it's still in my head. <laughs> Shows the, the yeah. power of memorizing when you're little, right? I guess. Yeah. Either that or I just, I thought it was so funny. I know. Um, so, how's everybody doing? Uh, you got a discussion question. Yeah, my discussion away, question huh? is, what is your secret talent? Because you have one. Secret talents. You're going to sing for us. <laughs> That's not secret. She does it no, every I... week. No, I... And if you're talking about I me, recited a poem. That's my secret talent. <laughs> I will not be singing for us. Um, yeah, what's your, what'd you do today? Tell them you're, they don't expect this of you. Is that a secret talent? It's a secret talent. Oh. I made a um, washer and dryer pedestal. Yeah. It's basically a big wood um, shelf. He knows yeah. how to use tools. Yeah. His wood teacher would be very proud. We can get a little interaction here. I got, I got a picture of it. You yeah. want to see a picture? Let me go get a picture. This is yeah. what he did all day today. That took up most of the day. He made oh, that. look at that. A little pedestal. You know why I made that? Because at Lowe's, they want to charge me $289 for a pedestal. And we're both cheap skates. And <laughs> Well, we just got a new washer and dryer. First time ever. First time ever. We've yeah. always had used. We've always had We junkers. feel like we're living in the lap of luxury. <laughs> Nobody has a secret talent, apparently. Yeah. Secret talent. Oh, see, Jane approves of your talent, though. Oh, thanks, okay. Jane. Nobody wants to brag on themselves. But you, if you, it's your talent. There's six people watching. Yeah. Nobody's and telling you. Some hidden talents I out there. I guess it's a bad discussion question. Okay. All right. Well, well we're going to get started. Mark. Chapter 13 tonight, Mark chapter 13, um, verses 35 through 44. So we're getting right down there. If you've been following along through the whole time. Um, oh, sorry. Mark 12. Yeah. 35 through 44. I feel like it's been a while since we've been on it here. It has been. Mark 12. So we read it. We summarize it. We ask where we see God. We ask where we see people. We ask application, and then we consider who we could share it with. That's the whole process. Right. Did you share your talent? No. Oh, was it that know. poem? Yeah, it's reciting poems. poems. Okay. Yep, that's my talent. And writing poetry. Okay. All right, let me pray for us, <laughs> and we'll jump in here, read through Mark 12, 35 through 44. There's a little bit of a hodgepodge, I think, tonight. We have a few different topics. Okay, let me pray for us. Uh, Lord Jesus, we just uh, we thank you for tonight. Thank you. Uh, you can be here with Stephanie and just open up your word. And um, God, we pray for everybody who's joining us that we just have some good discussion and enjoy ourselves. And um, Lord, that you just teach us um, by your word. And we do believe it to be true. So we pray, God, that it would just direct our lives and just help us to know you better. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Mark 12. 35 to 44. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself in the Holy Spirit declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. And in his teaching he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into their offering box. 
Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him, and he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. All right. Good deal. So uh, we'll do a little summary. Let me just summarize this. I'll help us just get a grasp for it. So it started out, um, Jesus poses this question. He says, hey, how can the scribes say that Jesus is the son of David? Uh, David said to himself, he's quoting Psalm 110 here. And he says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. So there's David referring to Jesus as his Lord. So David himself calls him Lord. How can he be his son? Uh, and then he talks about the scribes who were basically boastful and prancing around in the marketplaces with their nice clothes and their places of honor. Um, and it says that they're going to receive greater condemnation uh, because of you know how boastful they are. And then we have this um, little section here on the widow's offering. So all these rich people put in uh, a decent amount of money, but they're rich. And then this poor lady goes up and puts in everything she has. Just, uh, what was it, two coins? Um, and Jesus says that, that she's put in more than anybody because she gave everything. And the first question we ask about this is, what does it teach about God? And we invite you into that. So if you have any thoughts here on uh, what this says about God, feel free to, to shout them out. Type them out. What do you think, Jenny? Any thoughts about God? Um, he appreciates sacrifice and recognizes it. Sure. Where's that from in the text? Um, the widow, when she puts in, you know, those two pennies. So, verse 44. Like, even though it's smaller than anybody else, he still recognizes it as, like, larger, really. Yeah. Than a lot of other people were giving. She gave everything. Yeah. So even if we maybe feel like we don't have as much to offer, yeah. that doesn't lessen our sacrifice when we do offer what we have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I guess to contrast that, the, the Pharisees or the scribes, you know, like they were appearing like they're doing all this stuff. You know, they mm -hmm. have the best seats. They're making prayers for the widows. They're wearing their robes around, but he's like, they're going to be condemned for that. Like, they're they're not mm -hmm. getting any reward. So maybe so, his uh, lack of value on worldly appearance or worldly yeah. position. God is not impressed by... Our pomp. Yeah. He's not impressed in the same way we're impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this one about the Christ. Anything there? Um, Any thoughts here? About. Uh, Kim says more interested in quality than quantity. Yeah. Good. So, yeah, the, the heart there. <clears throat> this isn't really about God, but I kind of thought, like, all three sort of go together on the idea that, like, David was able to call, like, his descendant his Lord mm -hmm. because he was able to recognize in the scheme of things that he wasn't all that. Mm -hmm. which David was, like, he was this huge, he was a man after God's own heart, he was, you know, like the king, mm -hmm. but yeah, he realized that he wasn't, mm -hmm. and then you have the contrast of the scribes who can't recognize that, and so they're going to receive con condemnation, mm -hmm. and then you have the widow who is humble enough to give everything, yeah. so they kind of do all fit together, fit together. Yeah. yeah, that's good, but that's, that's more good like, good humility to say that, yeah, God is more interested in our heart, yeah. says Tim. Yeah, that's good. So the, the poor lady's heart and, and the heart of those scribes, like it said, um, uh, they who devour the widow's houses and for a pretense make long prayers. So like their their intent there is is not right. So I think that's a good observation. Yeah. Jane says he wants to give 
our all to, he wants us to give our all to him and this is Tim said he wants our heart yeah yeah not to hold things back that's good so what about people that's the next question we ask what does it tell us about God and then what does this teach us about people um, what do we learn about just the, the state of humanity here do you have any thoughts Stephanie I mean, I guess like with the widow, I'm sure she wasn't making a big show about going up there. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was probably a little bit of maybe like shame in her heart. Like she felt like she wasn't doing enough, She's but that she did it anyway. And that, you know, maybe like the other person had just been up there and like dropped their big gift or whatever. And like people were like, oh, you know, and they were distracted. And I just picture her kind of like slinking up there and. Yeah. Like not even recognizing what she's doing. And I think I think that says something about people like I mean, we don't know the context, but if I was her I would probably feel like it doesn't even matter. Yeah. And, yeah. and that it does matter. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting, you know, you see this like and it seems to be global. Like you've seen poor people all over the world and I remember working in Cincinnati one summer. Yeah. And uh, during college and like these poor people would much more easily give stuff to their neighbors to their family like they can let go of stuff a lot more easily than even us who mm -hmm. who have more possessions like it's like we want to hold on to it tighter yeah. even though we have more security if you will like mm -hmm. they don't have as much to lose they know what it's like to be without anything and they're just mm -hmm. trying to get through the day you know like they just want their meal and their mm -hmm. place to sleep and i think there's you know, there's probably something freeing about that. And that's, I mean, that's convicting for me. And just to think about giving literally everything, you know, not just, yeah. not just like uh, spiritually, not just our whole heart, but like yeah. she really gave everything basically. Yeah. Well, and just like the contrast with her and the scribes when you look in verse like the scribes, they liked their clothes. They liked to be known by people and like people to know that they, so they were name droppers. They liked to be seated in church in like the place where they would seen mm -hmm. and at feasts in the place where people are like, oh, they must be important. Yeah. And just there was so much for opposite. Mm -hmm. And I guess all those things listed are kind of things that you can be like, am I like, you know, because that's what they're receiving condemnation for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I. I, I think it's a, a hard text. You yeah. Know, for us in the Western world, where. Yeah. Especially in this area of rural mm -hmm. Ohio, like most people got plenty. Yeah. I don't know. That's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Joanne says some people are concerned about themselves. Again, it is the heart. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Joanne. Um, so another question we ask is about application. If if this is really God's word, we believe it is, what would we want to change about our life or, or how could we apply this to our life? I mean, just the willingness to let go of what we have, mm -hmm. which is pretty hard. I know there have been times during this where <laughs> I'm like pretty relaxed about it all you know but there were times when i'm like um do i need to stockpile foods so that i can make sure to feed my children because oh, like, the corn like i'll stuff. starve but i don't want my kids to starve and like saw moments of that and just like i don't need like god will take care of me and just like trusting that and so like this widow had to be willing to trust like yeah. with everything and right. like am i really willing to yeah trust him to that extent as goofy as that is. <laughs> right. Well, there again, like it's it's just completely different. Like, yeah. She's got two pennies to her name. Yeah. You know, like, and that was her security, I'm sure. Right. And then she just much. she just dropped, and like that makes me anxious for her. I'm like, why don't you just pick those back up? Just keep a little bit. Just a little a little nest egg. <laughs> yeah. To protect you. Yeah. No, I agree. I think for me, application would be just. Um, yeah, I think. It's kind of a, a check yourself, check your heart type of thing on um, how are we really caring for people. Um, 
Do we just give out of our abundance or do we give sacrificially? And like you, you mentioned that. You know, God values sacrifice. Yeah. And then in what ways are we sacrificing for kingdom purposes? So that's probably mine. How about how about all of you? Do you have any thoughts on, on how this is applicable to your life? The scribes kind of marching around. Tim says, David was a great king and still needed a savior. We are the same. Yeah. yeah. So it reveals the need there of even in this high place. Yeah. That's good. Do you have any other thoughts on it? No. I was looking for something I read the other day, but I can't remember where I found it. Can't find it. It's about the Holy Spirit. But yeah. So it does, um, I can share a little story. Stories are good. Uh, we shared this with our kids tonight because we were looking at this passage and I just started reading about Hudson Taylor who uh, started China Inland Mission. It was a missionary to China, a really well-known missionary, Christian guy. And he kind of had a breakthrough spiritually in his life when uh, he he just had one coin to his name. Basically, he was, you know, he, he was waiting to get paid. He wasn't getting paid in time. And this guy asked him to come pray for him and his wife because he thought his wife was going to die. She'd just given birth. So Hudson Taylor shows up at this guy's house, and there's uh, four or five kids in the home. You can tell they're starving. Uh, this little baby's 36 hours old and, you know, barely living. The mother appears as if she might die, and they don't have any food. They, you know, they don't have anything. And he's got this one coin in his pocket, um, but it's all he has to his whole name. So it's probably like this woman here. And he wouldn't let go of it. He didn't tell the guy that he had it. He just kept it in his pocket. Um, he did pray for him. But he said as he was praying for that family, he just felt so convicted that he wasn't going to give him the money. Um, so then, you know, after the prayer, he's like, I got to give him this money. And, and he gave him that last coin. And, and he said, like, the joy that he had before just came flooding back into his heart. And he, like, he went home with a sense of peace and joy because he had given that. Um, and he didn't have to deal with that struggle of, like, that he couldn't give it over. Um, and then God, you know, uh, God actually healed that. That lady lived um, and all his meals were supplied, you know. So it was just a, a big learning point that I think really connected to this that I thought was pretty interesting and, and timely. I just read about that. thought it was a good thing to share, but um, yeah, I don't know what that means for us. Just being willing to, to let go of stuff. Well, I just, it's interesting too, because I do think like, you know, there's the whole minimalist movement, the Marie Kondo, like, yeah. and people feel like such relief when they get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think like when he gave away, like he was moved by God to give obviously, but that he had such a like, like a weight was lifted off him because it proved that his stuff didn't own him. Mm -hmm. And I think we are so often owned by our stuff yeah. that like yeah. we have to be willing to give it over. And I do think we feel some relief. Mm -hmm. but. It would probably be freeing. Yeah. 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 Just getting there. Yeah. Okay. Well, anybody else uh, have anything you want to toss in there? feel free. Otherwise, we asked kind of who we could share this with. So the story of David calling Jesus uh, Lord, you know, he was his Lord, but also his son. So that was a lot about who Jesus is. Uh, he came in the line of David as a son, but he was also God's son as the Messiah. So that's how he could be Lord of David and also son of David. Um, we had the story on the, the scribes who were, you know, boastful, and then the story on this woman who gave it all. So yeah, if somebody comes to your mind from that, just think about shooting them an email or a text message and share it with them. But you want me to pray for us? Sure. Okay. Well, thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, somebody else will be here tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. So, yeah, if you're able, come join them. Father God, we thank you for tonight. And um, God, I just pray that you would help us uh, to know how to give sacrificially. And Lord, just teach us what that really means. Um, just show us the joy in giving, and God, just help us to loosen our hands 
on the possessions that we have and uh, just to keep them in right perspective and that we wouldn't uh, be too possessive of the blessings that you have given to us, Lord, um, especially during this time of coronavirus. There's a lot of people in need, um, maybe not right around here, but just around the world, God. So just lead us through that, I pray, and just um, yeah, make us live like this woman who gave it all, uh, that you'd be pleased with our hearts. So we just pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.